Are you planning a family vacation for this summer? Sometimes these vacations can really wear down the parents, especially if your children are young or you're paying for that trip with credit. You'll come back feeling much more relaxed and refreshed if you can enjoy the experience and are not racking up debt from the trip. Holly Johnson from Club Thrifty joins us to discuss how she makes the most of family travel, starting before the trip by reducing expenses and budgeting in advance. Then we get in how to save the most money and get the most value for your vacation dollar. Welcome to the Maple Money Show, the podcast that helps Canadians improve their personal finances to create lasting financial freedom. Our sponsor, Wealthsimple, has a better way to save. Smart Savings has no fees on deposits and withdrawals, and they offer higher interest rates than the big banks. You can find out more about Smart Savings at maplemoney.com slash Wealthsimple. Now let's chat with Holly. Hi, Holly. Welcome to the Maple Money Show. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I wanted to have you on because I, I know you, you do a lot of travel with the family and, and it's one of the, the big topics we have on Maple Money. Um, and so I want to bring you on as an expert because I, I want to get into your, your, your story a little bit. I know sort of there was a point where you decided that uh, travel was important to you and, you and you sort of changed your finances to make that happen. Can, can you kind of go way back to sort of when, when all this started, when you, when you sort of decided to fix up your finances so that you could attain goals like that? Sure. Well, the Cliff Notes version is that uh, my husband and I used to work in the funeral industry and we worked a lot of hours and we made a really ne- nice living, but not not as much as we are now. But uh, more importantly, we only had like 15 vacation days a year and those were also our sick days. And then we were trying to have kids. And honestly, like, there was there were definitely points like back in 2008 to 2010, where I was like, wow, my life sucks because all I do is go to work, take care of a small child and go home and do chores and go to bed. And then our vacation was like visiting family members out of state. So like eventually we started our blog clubthrifty.com in like 2011. And over the course of several years, we were both able to quit and do it full time. And like, I definitely don't miss the days of having PTO, but I, I love the freedom of self-employment. And I feel like so many people wait their entire lives to retire and then they want to travel and go places. And I feel like self-employment has given us the opportunity to go and do li- literally do anything we want for as many weeks a year as we want while we're still young and can enjoy it. So that's what we're trying to do. And I also, the funeral industry kind of made us put things into perspective too, because people all the time were like dying in car wrecks. Or I remember this one time, this guy died his final day of work. That he, It was his final day of work. He had put in, you know, 30 some years of the company. They threw a party for him. And then he died that night. And they, him and his wife had all these plans to go on like a cruise to Alaska and do all this stuff. And he never got to do anything of it. And I just think it's such a shame. So we are trying to live very intentionally and to travel is a part of that. Yeah. Um, my, my friend, Jimmy at Retire Happy here in Canada, he, uh, he points out that sort of traveling retirement is, is a bit of a myth anyways, because w- when you actually hit retirement, are you, are you really going to travel all year? <laughs> like, right. you, you might just go for a few weeks anyways. And, and then the rest of the year, you still need to know what you want to do outside of travel. Right, exactly. And then you never know how your health is going to be. Like nobody knows if you're going to be in good enough shape to travel or, you know, a lot can happen. So we're just trying to strike while the iron is hot and do as much as we can with our our young children. Great. Um, So when you first decided you wanted to sort of do this, get get your finances in order and and go uh, travel, um, sort of what steps did you take? Did you start budgeting, tracking expenses? Well, we started, uh, like I said, when we worked in the funeral home, we made a nice living. I I don't remember how much we made, but it was less than six figures together because I made like 38,000 a year. So we didn't, we had plenty of money and good jobs, but not tons of money. But we had two car payments, spent a lot of money on convenience items like groceries, eating out because we were so busy, daycare for the kids, a lot of stuff like that. So we did start budgeting. We drastically cut our expenses, threw all the money towards our debts, kind of snowballed them. 
Uh, we use zero sum budgeting, which I'm sure you know is a type of budgeting that you spend all the dollars that you earn on paper every month. And over the course of a certain amount of time, we paid off our car loans and then we moved on to student loans. And then we actually just paid off our house uh, last year. Great. So uh, that, that's great. Um, so if, if someone wants to to do this, like we, we have loads of episodes for sure that about uh, getting this, this sort of under control, but specifically for travel, how would you suggest that someone does something like this? Uh, do they, do they uh, sort of set up a different savings account or, or at least track sort of a, a goal for this? Yeah, I definitely think that that's important. We have a travel savings fund that I set aside X number of dollars every month in, like a high yield savings account. Um, I think if you just try to do it with your regular savings, it's easy to spend that money elsewhere on, you know, braces for the kids or not that those things aren't important, <laughs> but like, I, I like to save for different things. So I have different accounts for different goals. So I would say, you know, if you can save whatever you can per month in a travel savings account, that's earning interest. I think that's really smart. We didn't really start traveling a lot until we were debt-free though. So we had more expendable income to start saving for travel because we no longer had car payments or student loan payments or anything like that. Yeah. And, and like anything else, it, it certainly makes much more sense that you'd save up in advance instead of putting it on a credit card and 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 then sort of having to pay that off for months after the fact. Like you're still making well, that same monthly payment, but you don't have as much uh, power with that money. It, it does make sense, but it surprises me how many people charge their vacations and then pay for it when they get home. And I personally think that would be a terrible way to end a vacation with a credit card bill. So, you know, you can make the same payment to, like you said, to a savings account and then boom, you have the money. And then you can go on your vacation and truly enjoy it because you're not going to be paying for it for the next year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Basically every every year right now we we trend we try to uh have sort of one decent family trip <laughs> that that we actually have to fly for and everything. And uh that's exactly what we do. We 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 save up across the months, uh, which makes a a lot smaller. Just 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 the same as any annual expense if it was Christmas or something like that. Right. <laughs> Break it down into into twelve smaller chunks instead of, oh, where am I gonna come up with this four figure amount for the trip? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so we, we've kind of covered how to, how to deal with your, your, your current financial situation and how to start saving up for travel. Um, but, but let's get into what really can help make travel cheaper. Um, <laughs> if, if, if we could kind of just go through uh, any sort of tips you have around uh, reducing the cost of travel. Well, my number one tip, and this applies to anyone uh, anyone, anywhere at any budget is to be flexible with where you want to go. Cause I talk to a lot of people about travel and about saving money on travel. And the biggest problem I see with people is they get their heart set on one destination and they can only go on these fixed dates. And that is the absolute worst way to save money on travel. And it happens all the time. Like somebody's like, Oh, I want to go to Aruba. And I got to go the week of December 12th to December 19th or something. Well, then you're pretty much stuck with, you know, the options that are available, uh, the flights that are available, the hotels, whatever the rates are. But let's say instead of saying, I got to go to Aruba, I, I have these six Caribbean islands I would go to. Or if you want to go to Europe or Asia or whatever, having five, six destinations and then comparing the pricing on those is such a huge thing. Uh, the second thing is being flexible with dates, which is hard for families with kids. But if you can be flexible with dates, it makes a big difference. Like we almost always fly on Tuesdays if we can, like two week trip, Tuesday through Tuesday, because it's always considerably cheaper. Um, and, you know, maybe it's not Tuesdays for you, but maybe if you check instead of flying Saturday to Saturday, if you could fly Monday to Monday, something like that can make a huge difference. Yeah, it's also a lot less aggravating. I, I try to yes. avoid the airports on the weekend. <laughs> oh gosh, yes, very true. Uh, another thing I've seen, um, specifically for Canadians in this case, is uh, some of the the different destinations. They'll have Canadian specific deals. Like uh, I'm, I'm taking my family to to Disneyland uh, this year, and and 
there's there's an actual like Canadian deal <laughs> where, where, right. where there's an extra discount just to try to get them to come out uh, within a certain time of year. Like it, yeah. it doesn't apply in the summer kind of thing. It's, <laughs> it's earlier. That's awesome. Year. Yeah. Um, how about hotels? Is there any ways to save money on hotels or is that tougher? Uh, well, I would say, you know, it depends. I always try to keep an open mind. Like we stay in everything from like uh, roadside motels that make my husband cringe to $1,500 a night, like luxury hotels. If we pay with points, not with money, but <laughs> yeah. you know, I always try to be flexible. I think one thing that really works for my family, cause we have two kids age seven and nine is we try to look for Airbnbs, um, when we can and when it makes sense, especially like in big cities, because it's nice having a separate sleeping area for the kids. And then we have a kitchen and we can make breakfast and lunch in there because dining out is one of the most expensive parts of travel, no matter, no matter where you are. So I often find that like a cheap Airbnb will be a lot cheaper than a hotel and without a lot of the trappings that get you to spend money. Like when you're in a resort and there's like, you know, a resort fee and $16 cocktails and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, I think Airbnb like kind of is more of a home experience. So there, there are more ways to save money. Uh, how's Airbnb been for you? I, I, I see some people, they seem to have these, these horror stories of that. They, they find out what they, what they thought they were renting. Isn't quite, <laughs> isn't quite the case. Uh, uh, has it been okay for you or can you sort of go by the ratings on the site? Uh, I, I've probably stayed in like 30 Airbnbs. I've never had any problems, but I totally believe a lot of people. Cause I've seen like pictures that have been shocking of like totally places that have been misrepresented that aren't nice or like they lied about something, but I've had good experiences. I really have, but I read reviews. I do my research. I always email and say like, Hey, does your Wi-Fi actually work? Because <laughs> Um, I stayed in rental condo with my parents once that had Wi-Fi, but you had to plug into the wall at the kitchen counter to use it. And so I always ask people like, what is the Wi-Fi situation really like? Cause we have an online business, but you know, I don't know, do your research, but don't sweat the small stuff either. Like people complain about everything and I don't know, I'm pretty easy to please. So if something isn't perfect, I usually overlook it. Yeah. And I guess that really applies to hotels too. Like yeah. I, I look on uh, TripAdvisor for reviews and a hotel might be awesomely reviewed, but then there'll be like that one time where, where someone had had right. rust stains all over, found a bug or something. I go, I traveled half on not to like nitpick hotels. Like, so <laughs> if something isn't quite right, I'll be like, whatever. But I mean, I've had, I've asked to move rooms when something's really bad at a hotel, but very rarely. Yeah. Great. Um, so, so we both have a, a couple of young kids each. So we've had to to deal with traveling with kids. Uh, what tips do you have around that? Um, not just for saving money, but also our sanity. <laughs> any, any kind of uh, ideas on, on traveling with kids specifically? Well, I definitely think staying in a condo instead of a hotel is how I stay sane because I'm not sleeping with my kids. They need their own bedroom. And so we usually get like a two bedroom or a one bedroom with a fold out couch in the living room because I am not sleeping four deep in a hotel room with my seven and nine year old. I think that's one way to make everyone miserable, honestly. And I, it shocks me when people do it for a lot, like a couple of nights is fine, but like go, don't go on a two week vacation in a room with two double sized beds and then expect to have fun. It's too much, too much closeness in my opinion. So yeah. That's one of them. I don't know. When I we do a lot of really long trips with the kids, like two week trips, I plan a lot of downtime so that we're not overscheduled. Um, other than that, I just we just try to have fun, spend time together. In terms of saving money with kids, uh, it, there's a lot of saying no because my kids always want ice cream and this souvenir and this and that. So like I, they have a spending limit like money they can spend on trips. And then once it's gone, it's gone. I think that helps. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, sort of just give them that, that set budget amount. Uh, yes. Cause, cause yeah, I, I know what that's like. We've, uh, we've gone on a few different trips where um, it, it, yeah, it's constant spending between candies and toys and everything else. Right. <laughs> so yeah, maybe, maybe I'll try that on my next trip. <laughs> um, what did I want to say here? Oh, uh, how about uh, all inclusives? Is is there any sort of way to save money there? Well, I love all inclusive resorts. 
and cruises, but I love all-inclusive resorts. I'm a huge all-inclusive re- uh, enthusiast. I would say, like, I, we usually stay in middle of the road all inclusives. They're very expensive ones. They're cheap ones. Some of the cheap ones really skimp on the food, and uh, it can be kind of gross. Like we stayed in a couple in Mexico that I wouldn't go back to just because it was super low end. The people were nice, but you know the food was disgusting and the walls were super thin. But I don't know. I would say when it comes to all inclusives, be flexible about the destination because if you're going to all inclusive resort in the Caribbean, probably. A beach is a beach for the most part. So don't get your heart set on one destination. Like consider several, including the cost of flights, the hotel and everything else. Do you uh, look at last minute deals at all? Like this idea that someone's got a a week that they can take off work and their kids are available to leave and everything too. Um, Do you recommend like some of these last minute sites? Or I mean, I don't do it myself. I always plan like a year ahead, everything we we do. But (laughs) if you can get a last minute deal, by golly, go for it. Yeah, I've, I've never made that plunge either for the same reason. I like to kind of plan ahead, but uh, yes. I, I do like the idea, though, that you could kind of set aside this week. Uh, someone with a full-time job could kind of say that's their week of vacation. Uh, and like you said, to be flexible, like just see what what's what the deals are with a, a week sure. or two out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As long as you're willing to go with the flow and I, I feel like that wouldn't work for my personality. I would be, I would be freaking out that I didn't have plans for that week, but. Yeah. My, my worry would too, would be that I, I couldn't find anything. Yes. Um, even though I've seen newsletters that have 30 different options for that week. Right. But for, right. for some reason I have this fear that I, I wouldn't be able to find something if I kind of waited to the last second like that. Yeah. Um, how about, uh, again, kind of going back with, with dealing as, as a family trip is, is there any, tips about dealing with uh, the actual travel part, like on a plane, going through airport security? On saving money or just in general? Uh, either way, actually. Uh, I, I, I tend to think when it, when it comes to, especially with travel, anything that kind of makes your trip better, it, it kind of adds value to the trip as well. Well, my kids are seven and nine, so I always bring tons of snacks everywhere I go. That some Partially to save money, but also because... Um, you know, it might be in a plane or a train or in a line somewhere. And I just like having food to pull out and be like, here you go, like crackers or, you know, whatever, something simple. Um, we try to do a lot of train travel when we can, especially in Europe, it's really easy to get around, obviously. So we, I think that's infinitely more comfortable for families than flying. So we'll take a long train versus taking a shorter flight just because it's more comfortable and the kids are happier and it's kind of an experience in itself. Yeah. yeah I've never, uh, I've never considered that. <laughs> I'll have to look at it. Um, now I know with credit cards, you're, you know, your American credit cards, but just in general, um, can you kind of walk us through some of the ideas of uh, how rewards cards can help us, get travel potentially for free? Well, I mean, obviously United States, we have different credit, we have different rewards, credit cards, different programs and everything, but, um, cards in the U S and I'm assuming in Canada, do they have sign up bonuses that you can earn after you spend a certain amount of money within three months? Yeah, for sure. There's uh there's sign up bonuses. They're not, they're not as great as the cards in the States, but, uh, they, they might be worth a, a free, uh, uh, flight within Canada, maybe. Sure. Well, and then obviously you're going to earn points on your regular spending. So if you like what my family does is we just use credit cards for our regular spending, like really boring stuff, groceries, insurance, gas, you know, the kids lessons and stuff like that. And then we just pay it off every month, just like if we had paid with a debit card or whatever. So the key to using rewards is obviously just always paying your balance in full and never paying interest, obviously, because um, you're not helping yourself if you're in debt and racking up debt, high interest debt, and then earning like 1%. Um, it just doesn't make sense. People do it all the time, but it's, I think rewards are for people who have, who are disciplined and can pay their credit card bills in time and, you know, and live a debt-free lifestyle. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something I try to remind people all the time of, uh, cause, cause we'll talk about credit cards quite a bit on the, the show and the website, but, uh, yeah, if you're like I said, if you're if you're paying a balance, it kind of negates all that, and then right, <laughs> it does. I know um, 
one time, like a couple of years ago, one of my old neighbors messaged me and was, had just moved to like Atlanta, I think. And she was looking for an airline credit card to fly back and forth. And I helped her figure out which one to get. And then I kid you not, a couple months later, she emailed me looking for a balance transfer card because she had racked up, you know, however much in debt and was paying a ton of interest. And now she needed a balance transfer card to uh, pay that off with zero interest. So anyways, I always say that because I feel like if I don't say it, I'm giving people advice that may not help them. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I've said a couple of times on the show in the past, uh, that, that I had this problem with credit cards, uh, uh, back in college. Um, sure. it, it wasn't for travel, but it's, I, I certainly get the the point that, yeah, they're not free money and you can't carry a balance. So, right. uh, make sure they pay them off. Um, so, so also here in Canada, in addition to sign-up bonuses, uh, some of our cards just have decent uh, uh, perks that, that that also apply to travel. Um, c- can you kind of take us through sort of some of the different uh, like travel insurances and everything that, that that may be on credit cards? Well, the credit cards that we have at the United States, some of them have trip trip cancellation interruption insurance, which I've used before. One time, my husband and I got stranded at a all-inclusive in Jamaica, actually. And it was, uh, it snowed in the Southern U S and so a bunch of airports got closed down and we were supposed to fly into Charlotte and it was closed down. So we got stranded there two extra days and I filed a claim and they reimbursed me for our, our hotel and then the flight change and everything, but trip cancellation insurance, trip interruption insurance, baggage delay coverage, um, travel accident insurance. Those are popular perks that you can get with a rewards credit card or travel credit card that are travel related. I know in the United States, you can use some cards to get like a global entry or TSA pre-check uh, credit, which may or may not apply to you. I'm not sure. Uh, well, we don't, we don't have any cards that I can think of that, that offer that, but, but we certainly have the, the Nexus side in, in Canada, oh, okay. which is right. the same as global entry, but, but yeah, we have to just pay for it. I don't think any credit card offers that as, as part, oh, okay. of, <laughs> part of the price. Right. So yeah. I, I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I remember the other thing I wanted to bring up, it was, uh, uh, the idea of, uh, bringing snacks for your kids. Um, as as we're going to Disneyland, uh, pretty soon, one, one of the things we're planning on doing is, uh, also bringing breakfast. Now we are stuck in a hotel where it's going to be two uh, queen size beds. Okay. Um, we're thinking Sorry, about. I didn't a, mean to rub it in. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at least we're only going for a week. I think we can right. survive a week. I, I get oh, that two week weeks. Be, they'll be tired anyway. Yeah. Um, but what one thing we're doing is is we're going to pick up uh, like boxes of cereal. Yeah. Um, that both kids eat cereal without milk, so it doesn't even matter that we don't have a fridge. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, and and this is going to do a couple things for us when it comes to Disneyland. Not that this is supposed to be a show about Disneyland, but it's in my head. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's going to get them fed cheaper, but it's also going to be a lot more efficient to like sort of get out and start the day. Oh yeah. I agree. Instead, instead of starting the day with some hour and a half breakfast. that <laughs> Right. That's why we usually eat. We usually, when we go on big trips, we usually dine out one meal a day, either lunch or dinner. So sometimes we'll dine out for lunch and then pick up something for dinner and, make it ourselves or like something easy like sandwiches, but usually we go out to dinner, but breakfast is kind of a no brainer to eat in your room. Cause like I, my kids eat cereal too, but they'll also eat like bananas and bagels and stuff. That's easy to just like eat real quick. Yeah. So just stop at a grocery store and get your own little continental breakfast going. <laughs> exactly. Uh, is there any other tips you, you thought that uh, we should cover that maybe we haven't brought up yet? Mm, I don't know. Um, uh, do, do you want to talk about like tools people can use to find good deals? Cause, um, yeah, sure. Just... Uh, any, any sites or anything like that? Uh, most of them apply to, to Canada and the U S well, my favorite, uh, site to use to look for flight deals is Google flights. You just Google Google flights and then you can put in your, where you are, your home airport and where you want to go and check a bunch of different dates and it'll compare against all the major airlines. But I also like it because you can search by the region. Like let's say you, you want to go from Calgary to Europe, but you're interested in a lot of European destinations. You can just put Europe in and then it'll compare prices all over Europe for you. And you might find a really cool travel deal to a destination you wanted to visit or maybe one that you hadn't thought of, but you're like, oh, that sounds good. So I really like that. 
Um, gosh, I was going to say something else. Oh, another uh, tip that is really important for my family that may not apply to everyone is that consider alternate airports because like my family lives near Indianapolis. So that's our home airport, but we can very often save like $300 per person or more if we drive to Chicago, which is three hours away. So if we're going to do it a long international flight, we might drive to Chicago and pay for an overnight hotel stay but still say $400 for flight, which is six, you know, $1,600 for the four of us. So it's totally worth making the couple hour trip. So I would say don't only consider your own airport. If there are other airports you'd be willing to travel to. Yeah. I know some people here in, in Canada, if, if they're close enough to the border, uh, they'll actually drive across into the Oh yeah. That's US such a good idea. Fly. I mean, the difference can be huge. It can be huge. Yeah, uh, especially since it seems, I don't know if it's fees or what, but it seems that that flights from Canada are, are extra expensive. <laughs> so if, oh, you okay. can, if you can get across the, the border, uh, you can save money there. Uh, if, if you're somewhere like like Winnipeg or Vancouver, they're all right. really close to the border. A quick drive, less than you had to drive. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then that get, makes sense. That makes so much sense. And then you might have to play to park your car or whatever, but it, I mean, the difference could be thousands of dollars. Yeah, and and like you said, the the way it adds up, that's the same problem we have having having four people in your family. Uh, every cost is multiplied. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I, I I like the Google uh, Flights tip. Um, I, I commonly use Expedia. It's just something I've used forever. I can't say it's better or worse than anything else. But uh, um, are there are there any other sites you use? Like I've heard a lot of uh, good things about Skyscanner. Uh, some people use Skyscanner. It's very similar to Google Flights. Okay. I think you can accomplish the same tasks. I think on Skyscanner, you can also search by region. That's probably my favorite uh, aspect of using Google Flights because on Expedia, you can search and do the same thing. But you can't just say, I want to go to yeah. the, the Caribbean but I don't care where, you know? So it just kind of makes it easier. But um, I like the flight deal and uh, secretflying.com. I think both of those share deals from Canadian airports. Um, so I haven't the heard of them. I'll have to check. Yeah. If you go to the flightdeal.com, they share flight deals every day. And a lot of them are only good for that day. Yeah. But you can find some really good deals. Like I've found deal like $400 round trip to Europe, but you have to book that day or it's gone. So they're very short term thing. It's not to leave that day, just the short, the sales are short. So, um, you have to be ready to book. Yeah. And those, those deals are often very somewhat specific with their dates, yes. right? Like, yeah. Like it's only certain dates, only certain cities, but I like to keep an eye on it. Cause you never know. I found quite a few good deals just happen to be looking at the right time. Yeah. I'll check that out. I've, I've seen similar sites. There's, there's, probably loads, just like there's loads sure. of blogs, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it, it just like those last minute deals, it, 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 it seems like another good way to go where if, if you're able to be flexible enough, you can, you can save some money on these. On right. The like uh, for, I was trying to figure out where we were going to go at the end of July and I used Google flights and I just typed in Europe cause I, we have a lot weeks at a time we can go somewhere. And uh, I found flight round trip flights out of Chicago into London and home from Edinburgh for like $460 each. And so I just booked them, you know, that was like four of us round trip for, you know, barely the cost of the airline taxes and fees. Yeah. So, I mean, I think if you are open minded and willing to book stuff, you can save a lot of money. What's your, speaking of summer, what's your thoughts of traveling with uh, with your kids during the summers? So, so far, my kids are the same age as yours, and, and so far, I've been kind of uh, fearful of, <laughs> of traveling in the summer, just that it might be too busy. Um, we always we usually travel in the summer. I definitely think it's busier, especially depending on where you go. But um, we usually go to Europe in the summer because we can go for like three weeks at a time, and it's always way busier. So I prefer to go you know, off peak if I can, but it's also, my kids have eight weeks off straight. So it's kind of a lost opportunity if we don't go somewhere. So this, this summer we're going like five out of the eight weeks or something. Yeah. yeah and, and, and we both have kids that are kind of at the age that we shouldn't be pulling them out of school just for travel, right. uh, exactly. <laughs> which, yeah. I, which I've done in the past. It's like, well, we're, we're going to, we're going to go here. Uh, so right. <laughs> well, a day or two school. here or there is not a big deal, you know? 
yeah, fair enough. But, but yeah, uh, yeah it, when they were sort of kindergarten to grade two age, I, I didn't really care if I pulled them yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, well, this has been great. This has given us uh, lots of ideas, sort of how people can save up and then, and then spend less on their trip. Uh, can you let everybody know where they can find you online? Sure. Uh, well, my website is clubthrifty.com and all my social media handles are at clubthrifty. So you can find me online. I also write for lots of travel publications like Fodor's and U.S. News and World Report Travel and MSN Lifestyle. Great. Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Holly, for the family vacation tips. You can find the show notes for this episode at maplemoney.com slash hollyjohnson. The show keeps growing every week, but I need your help. If you have the Apple Podcast app on your phone, can you pull up Maple Money and give it a quick rating? Even better, leave a review as well and let everyone know what you think of the show. Thanks as always for listening, and I look forward to seeing you back here next week.